Announcement. 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 My name is David Fu, my pronouns are he, him, and this is the final in-service announcement for this year's church auction. Insight polite and relieved clapping. <laughs> The usual next thing for me to announce would be the total amount of money for our church that we raised last night at the live auction. But I want to deviate just a bit from the usual, because the auction is not just about money for our church, it's about building and maintaining our beloved community. And don't worry, I'll still tell you about the money. <laughs> Roughly 50 members, friends, and guests of the church built and maintained beloved community at last night's in-person auction. It was a lovely, lively, and delicious time. The thought of this all warms my heart, and I hope, I hope it warms yours as well. With that said, we raised just over $4,800 for the church last night. Insight enthusiastic collecting. <laughs> It took a lot of work and volunteer energy to run the event. Many thanks to all for doing their parts. In the meantime, I remind you that the online portion of the auction is still ongoing. It will end this evening at 6 p.m. Sign up for an economical social event or item on the Sign Up Genius, and let the bidding be fierce on Octrio. Finally, this was the current auction planning committee's final auction. It has been a great run. We have scads of institutional memory and materials to help our yet to be determined successors. If you are help, interested in helping to build and maintain our beloved community by running the auction, please let me or Kathy Fu know in the near future. Thank you for your attention. We now return you to our regularly scheduled worship service.
Gail Sanders light our chalice with these words of Tracy Johnson. We light our chalice this morning, light of our created spirits, light of our wise souls, light of our wondering and curious minds, light of love for this place, this people, this work. Illuminate our hearts and the spaces between them in this sacred time of unfolding. Blessed be. Even when I'm patient. 
And sticking up for someone when other kids aren't kind is really hard and really scary. Maybe I can't solve Tanisha's grape juice problem. Maybe all I can do is sit by her in art class and paint this picture for her because I know she likes purple too. Maybe I can only do small things, but my small things might join small things other people do. And together, they can grow into something big. Something really big. So big that all our kindnesses spill out of our school, spread throughout town. Travel across the country, and go all the way around the world. Right back to Tanisha and me, so we can be kind again and again. In the silence that follows the spoken prayer, you are invited to come forward and light a candle for any joys or concerns that you hold in your heart this morning. Spirit of love and life, source of all that is, we come into this sacred and hallowed space in fear and anxiety and trepidation. May we pause and center and simply breathe. May we rest in this moment, in this space, with these people. These sacred walls separating the hope and love held within from the anger held without. May we pause at just a moment in the safe oasis of holy hope. Breathing in, may we know peace. Breathing out, may we know love. May our hearts be at ease as we are held in this community of kindred spirits, of kindred souls, praying together for peace and healing, praying together for hope and love. Blessed is the sacred and hallowed space made holy by the presence 
of you, sacred divinity, guiding us as we work to create heaven here in this earthly realm, as we gather as a community of compassion, of unconditional love. And we know that love and hope are stronger than hate and bigotry, that compassion and faith persevere. When we face violence, may we ground ourselves in peace. When we face anger, may we ground ourselves in unity, knowing that we are stronger together, knowing that we are held always in divine love, in the love of our beloveds, in sacred love offered from the mortal and the immortal guided by faith, by all that is sacred, holy, loving, and entirely unknowable. May it be so, and honor.
I light a candle for the joys and concerns of those beloveds joining us on Zoom virtually. And I light a candle for all else that we hold in our hearts and our minds this morning. If your heart is hurting, know that your community is here to help, as am I. Please reach out with any need. Our offering words are by Victoria Weinstein, adapted. <laughs> Jump the gun a little bit. Uh, our offering words are by Victoria Weinstein, adapted. Every week in our church, we take up an offering. It's good to remind ourselves from time to time that the offering is symbolic as well as practical. We know that it is through the pledges that we build our budget and our fund, our yearly programs, and ministries of worship. But we pass the plate during our worship service to make a community expression of thanks for the blessing of abundance, to visibly bring in the harvest at this most cherished hour of our week. Our offering says that the act of giving is as essential to our spiritual well being as anything else we do here on Sunday mornings. The morning offering will now be given and received in the spirit of grateful fellowship. For those of you watching the virtual service online, you may contribute to an offering plate using the donate button on our website or by mailing a check to the church office. I invite the ushers forward to receive the offering. you give and all that you do for our church and its wider concerns, we give thanks. Let us hear the words of Naomi, Rachel Naomi Remen. In the beginning, there was only the holy darkness the I'm soft, the source of life. And then in the course of history, at a moment in time, this world, the world of a thousand thousand things, emerged from the heart of the holy darkness as a great ray of light. And then there was an accident, 
and the vessels containing the light of the world, the wholeness of the world, broke. And the wholeness of the world, the light of the world, was shattered into a thousand, thousand fragments of light, and they fell into all events and all people, where they remain deeply hidden until this very day. Now, according to my grandfather, the whole human race is a response to this accident. We are here because we are born with the capacity to find the hidden light in all events and all people, to lift it up and make it visible once again, and thereby to restore the innate wholeness of the world. It's a very important story for our times. And this task is called Tikkun Olam in Hebrew. It's the restoration of the world. And this, of course, is a collective task. It involves all people who have ever been born, all people presently alive, and all people yet to be born. We are all healers of the world. And that story opens a sense of possibility. It's not about healing the world by making a huge difference. It's about healing the world that touches you, that's around you. Bell Hook offers Rarely, if ever, are any of us healed in isolation. Healing is an act of communion. Please rise, embody your spirit, and join us in hymn 344, A Promise Through the Ages Reigns. A Jewish wisdom's hail recounts 
the origin of the world with, of course, many variations. As one narrative offers, God worked to create the world by filling a vessel with divine might. As the sacred light filled the vessel, the container was unable to hold the divinity and shattered. The scattered shards contained that holy light as they dissipated throughout the cosmos, ultimately forming the sacred earth we call home. Our task as a people of this blessed planet is to reunite those scattered sparks of divine light, repairing this broken world, and in doing so, finish the work <coughs> that God began. This dictates a Jewish practice of Tikkun Olam, translated as fixing or repairing this world we call home. Today we talk about repair. We talk about finding these scattered shards to make complete once again that vessel of divine light that restores the innate wholeness of the world, the world God envisioned. As it is, our world is broken, so we search for those fragments. Shards are buried deep in this earth, a small piece of everything in this blessed realm. Fragments of hope and strength and perseverance and love. As our story of all ages tells us, there is kindness. While there are shards in the apparent beauty of the world, there are also fragments concealed by hate or bigotry or violence, awaiting a blessed being to unearth them and help make the world whole once again. Today it feels like bigotry and hatred have won, but bigotry and hatred will never win. Love. I truly believe in the power of love, the power of hope. I do not want to be flippant with these sentiments. We are held in a state of anger and fear and disbelief, and rightly so. In this pivotal moment, I acknowledge how distant and even impossible or unwarranted and how profoundly challenging that love or hope may feel. I think of our trans beloveds, our undocumented beloveds, our immigrant beloveds, those who fear for their safety. I see you and I love you. And yet, in order to repair this world, some form of love and hope are needed. These will help us survive in a world grounded in peace and faith. A world, however idealistic yet necessary, that is deprived of that which serves to our detriment. And when I speak of fear in this sense, I mean the fear stoked by our leaders to foster hate and oppression. Compassion and hope and love are needed because our only other alternatives are resentment and hostility. And this will only serve to foster more detrimental division. Ultimately, these shards of divine light are hidden and buried deep below the shadows and veils that cloak much of the world as we know it. But as the story tells us, they can be found and we can be made whole. I think of the underlying values of our faith that guide us to find those shards and to heal the world, those values of love and equity and worthiness and democracy, those values that serve as sparks of justice and healing, Tikhan Obam, those values that guide us as we work to repair our world. Repair, what can that mean? Often we think of repair as having made amends for wrongdoing or transgressions, and yet I wonder of reframing this and highlighting the idea of instead repairing one another, of loving the wounded, of protecting those who are targeted. I wonder of repair as an act of healing all of that which is broken. This is a collective task. We are all healers, 
all who were, all who are, all who ever will be. We are healers of the world. We are a possibility. We are a potential. We are hope. Peace, hope, love, compassion. These are the antidotes to fear and anger that breeds hatred. And we see the repercussions of this fear and this anger all around us. Of hate, of violence, of bigotry, racism, misogyny. Intentionally cultivating fear, sparking unwarranted anger that serves to break this world and lead to its detriment. So very apparent the power of fear. And responding to this fear, cultivating repair, this is intentional. It is how and who we want to be in this world, of how we want to serve as bearers of the values of our faith and protectors of our values that are under attack. Reproductive rights, immigrants' rights, trans rights, the environment, our values are at risk. And the story tells us we are here because we are tasked with finding those shards of light and recreating the world of all that is sacred and holy, of mending that which is broken to create a vessel of divine light, of uncovering peace and hope and love. And maybe, just maybe, we, ourselves, all of humanity, we are those scattered pieces. Maybe we create a blessed whole world when we unite as one, of one heart, of one soul. This is a substantial goal. This is a seemingly impossible goal. This is a goal that will take time and intention and patience and perseverance and hope. It is seeing the inherent goodness in one another as our faith offers. Each of us on either end of the political divide, seeing that innate goodness and worthiness and dignity held within all. I believe we have each encountered experiences of great difficulty of death or addiction or divorce or violence or loss or fear. We each know what it means to be devastated. I believe I know what it means to be devastated, to feel awful, helpless, angry, disappointed, rejected. We know this. And yet that is not where the story ends. That is not the conclusion. This is the climax. Ultimately, we get through and survive. And this is how we can all be sitting here together in this sacred and hallowed space. In this time of difficulty is when the imagination fails, when all we see is hardship and we cannot imagine a better life, but we survive. And often we find some semblance of good or a hidden blessing in the process. Strength, compassion, perhaps hope. It was not solved overnight. It takes patience. It was not easy or quick, but it was possible. Healing and repair are possible. How is this possible, we may ask, as we find ourselves in hate and fear and bigotry? How can we find good? We have fears of our values, our future, our democracy, the looming threat of violence, but think of this. Think of the profound and life-altering allyships that can form and grow and deepen as we see that profound need for solidarity and unity and partnership and love. Black, white, brown, gay, straight, trans, united, stronger than ever as the force against this violence and hatred. We see the fight for justice amplified and strengthened never to be stymied. We gather in the streets and we unite against oppression, stronger and with more conviction than ever. Those are the shards of divine light. That is what makes our world whole and holy. We do not see things as better initially. We may not even be able to imagine it. Change takes time. But hope tells us that it is possible. Experience tells us that we will survive 
and your strength then, and grow. I facilitated a small group discussion earlier this week, and we talked about the difference between heaven and hell in this mortal realm. Heaven is when people care for one another, tend to one another, help one another. Hell is filled with self-centered egotism. With the election looming, we broached the topic, what would heaven look like today? How do we bring heaven to a country so laden with the vision? We reflected, it is when we see one another as people, simply as people, where values of love and acceptance are shared and amplified. When we get to know one another, when we realize we have more in common than we do different. When all of humanity across the political spectrum interacts with love. Easy, yes. No, sorry, ideal, yes. Easy, no. Even seemingly impossible, but I offer that we can do this one small act at a time. One act of justice that creates and fosters equality and worthiness and healing and dignity and equity, creating a ripple effect that touches all humanity. This is the power of love. Love changes the lives it touches. In reflecting on this idea of heaven, I thought of a conversation I had with my dad earlier this week. His partner and he find great joy in square dancing. They go out at least three times a week. He told me square dancing is beautiful experience, in part because it is a diverse group of people coming together simply to dance. People from myriad backgrounds and life experiences. Not to engage with one another's politics or initiate arguments, simply to have fun and enjoy one another. Across differences, across fear, I got across the anger that is felt in the world at large. Beyond the walls of this dance hall, hate, bigotry, and animosity and violence persist. Within, joy, laughter, fun, and dancing persevere. These walls seem to serve as a barrier against the hate of the world. It's not that safety, its own form of heaven. I task us with a question. How can we create such an oasis, such a pause, such a time for breathing and healing and peace? How can we do this? It starts small, with those we love, radiating out to our households, our neighborhoods, our communities, our world. May we dance and find joy and delight in one another. May we create an oasis, whatever that may look like, a safe space. May we rest in such a dance hall. Let us center in a place of hope, for hope can change the world. Hope amidst hopelessness shows us all that can be. It shows us the potential held within our aching world, Hope keeps us from sinking into despair, for we can imagine what the future can hold. Hope keeps us from the harmful effects of inaction, because we see it is action and only action that can heal. Hope provides us strength to persevere and the creativity needed for radical change. Hope counters anger and fear because it reminds us that peace and love are possible. Hope is the spark of healing and the kindled flame of repair. And it is fostered by love, deep, unconditional, transformative love. As the tale tells us, we were created to piece together those scattered shards of divine light, making the world whole once again just as God intended. 
If we engage in that Jewish practice of Tikkun Olam, healing the world, hidden in the shadow of hate, we find a spark of love. Under the veil of fear, we unearth the flame of acceptance. Buried deep below the cloak of anger and violence, holy shards of hope and peace are present and apparent. Broken pieces of the earth waiting to be reunited as one blessed, holy, and complete world. This wholeness is what we seek to unearth and amplify as we meet the world with unconditional, holy, sacred love. Bigotry and hate will never win, for love changes all it touches, and hope gives us the power to imagine and create that world of peace and compassion that can be. Together, we repair this broken world and create heaven on earth. Heaven, where people are people, where we unite over similarities, where the dance halls of our hearts invite joy and exclude fear. We collect that dispersed divine light, those scattered sacred flames, and create a blessed and holy world of divine love, peace, compassion, hope, and faith. May it be so, and amen. Please rise, embody your spirit to join our voices in hymn number 121 in the gray hymnal, We'll Build a Land. <laughs>
dismayed by the brokenness of the world, but let us go forth offering more healing, more peace, more kindness guided by faith. May we invite and welcome divine presence as we leave the sacred and hallowed space, returning to the world once again, grounded in hope, in love, in compassion, ready to make the world whole. Go in peace and amen. Everyone, there's going to be a Sundays after today if you're interested in sticking around for that. Uh, Jane will be leading that probably in about 10 minutes. Hi, Inga. Hey, hi. Hi. Hi, Sarah. I just got here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unitarian Congregation of Columbia. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, did, were you there virtually or in person? Uh, no, in uh, Zoom. Zoom. Very yeah. good. Okay, great. I'm at home. Okay. Yeah. So... Yeah, so I heard the whole sermon. Okay, yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Are you at home? I'm at home, yeah, I'm at home. Uh, I'm, you know, the Zoom person today, so I'm home today instead of at church, yeah. Yeah. It's good to be able to talk to people like this, isn't it? Yeah, it well, is, yeah. You're used to it, but I'm not, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's really incredible. <laughs> 
this is all new. Yeah. 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 Well, I, uh, I actually work for a company that's based in Minnesota. So most of my work is done just on a screen like this, talking, talking to people. I go out there about once a month, but yeah. Wow. What a world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you're, you're in, you're in Colombia or local. Cadenceville. Yeah. I live in Cadenceville. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So who else is here? Julia? Julia's here. Joy is here. Hi. Joy is here. <laughs> what a sermon. Yeah. Powerful. Mm -hmm. How did your uh, auction go? Good. Yeah, we had uh, 51 people there. That was a great turnout. We had what? We had 51 people at the auction. Great. Yeah. Lots of, did you, did you end up with anything good? Good stuff? Yeah. Um, Jane got a ticket to a tea party and I got a ticket to a like learn how to make Italian food dinner. Learn to make what? Learn oh. how to make Italian food. Oh, great. Yeah. Because I, I cook a lot of Italian food, so I figure there's probably interesting new stuff that I can pick up from that. Let's see, where's my total? I bought a lot of things, mm -hmm. more than I should have probably at our auction. Uh -huh. Too bad they were both on the same weekend. Oh, yeah. What is that he's holding up? Dan, that, oh. Dan is just uh, in the... Uh, church there has the camera on still bring up something doesn't it yeah is anyone going to want to join sundays after julia and good joy i will okay uh, let me message dan back he's going to bring everyone down yeah oh. and so julia is it okay if i make you the host for this because i I need to rest, so I'm probably not going to be sticking around for Sundays after. Okay, how do I do that? All I have to do is make you the host, and then when when you leave, then the uh, the meeting ends. Or I okay. can make someone else <laughs> the host. Okay. Whatever. I just make host. All right, that's good. Now if I leave the meeting, the meeting won't end. Okay. Was there like any in between? Or Coming downstairs? How are you, Joy? Where's my list? Oh, the list of things you got at the UCC auction, Inga? Yeah, right, right. Got a lot of stuff. Oh. More than I should have. <laughs> More, mm -hmm. uh, mostly activities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a good crowd there last night. Great. Yeah, lots of food, lots of fun. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I had an adventure too. I ended up in the hospital for oh. just a day, but it seemed like five days. I, I was at a meeting when suddenly uh, they called the the people called the ambulance, and I didn't know exactly why. But I ended up in the hospital and got shots every hour or so, or less more and uh i went home after only one day and here i am what happened Eva? i must have been dehydrated i didn't hadn't drunk enough water yeah that's a big thing for me so here's my water yeah i have my water too <laughs> i have to be care more careful about that but it was amazing because everybody was so nice and 
even though I was in the hallway, lying, you know, in the cot, and and uh, I was comfortable enough watching all the activities, and mm-hmm. but it was weird. <laughs> out of your body experience yeah sort of right and it was only one day but it seemed like more than that mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so here i am and i i drove to to the uh, auction last night at, at, at the interfaith center but here i am mm-hmm. <laughs> drinking my water very good <laughs> glad you're here inga yeah Glad everything turned out. Yeah, right. Go ahead. Actually, I drink, um, I don't drink plain water. I drink, oh, I have to look it up. Something more interesting. Um, Alkaline water? Let's see. I have to look it up. I'll be back in a minute. My brain is still isn't working properly, I guess. Tonic water. Oh, yeah. Quinine. Zero sugar tonic water. It's much more interesting than plain water. I can drink more of that more easily. <laughs> oh, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> yes. yes. It really taught me a lesson. Drink enough water. So what's going on with you all? Julia, anything interesting? Well, Dave, my husband, is going to be naturalized at a ceremony this Wednesday. He's got his citizen. He'll get his citizenship. Great. What citizenship is he now? Where was he born and all? He's British. He will have a dual citizenship. Wow. So that's very exciting for us. Wow. So do you travel to England often? Well, we're going to go uh, in December. Mm-hmm. I've been going for a long time. So we're going to see family. Oh, wow, good. Spend Christmas there. We're in England. I have a cousin in England. In Bath and then in London. Uh-huh. I've been to Bath. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I've never been to uh, the UK, but all of my ancestors are from there on both of my parents' sides, mostly English, a little Scottish. Um, yeah. But uh, my mom wants to, wants to go sometime, so we might go. Not maybe in, in a few years or something, we might we might go on a on a trip there. Yeah. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my, my ancestors are from Ireland. Welsh, English, Scottish on one side, mm-hmm. and Ashkenazi on the other side. Oh, okay. So, yeah. we're probably related, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you go back far enough? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm German Jewish. Oh. Yeah, I was born in Germany. Wow. Yeah. Got over here when I was nine years old. Yeah. I believe. I'm not, I can't keep track of years anymore very well. But I, oh, I'll have to ask my son whether my cousin is still alive in, in England. Well, the last time we were over there um, in England, we, uh, I think I've been there twice. And the last time, we visited him and his mother, and um, his mother, and he has an airplane, and he took us for a ride in it. So that was great. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And my my kids and I uh, went to England the last time by ship. Oh. 
after the season. So we, and we wanted to visit the, um, what are the stones called? Oh, Stonehenge. Stonehenge. Uh, Stonehenge. Yeah. And the buses had stopped running. So we had to walk mm. a long ways. Have, have any of you been there? Stonehenge? Stonehenge, yes. Yeah. I was there. You have to go to Stonehenge. Yeah. You're in England. <laughs> and we kept putting out our thumbs anytime a car passed, but nobody picked us up. So we kept walking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So what a, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So hopefully you'll hear the discussion and you'll be able to participate because everyone can see you and you can see them. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll go see see where she is. Okay. So do you have a coffee time now? At you the, have coffee hours going on now, and some people stay in the coffee hour room. Some people come in here for Sundays after. Oh, I'm I'm keeping you from the coffee hour. Oh no, there's no Zoom coffee hour. It's just uh, in person. Some people go to coffee hour. Some people will come into the room you can see on the screen for the Sundays after discussion. Yeah, uh, I sure appreciate all this Zoom. Me too. Yeah. All of us being able to talk to each other like this. Yeah. From home and from the church. And mm -hmm. yeah, I'm old enough to appreciate all that. You're used to it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't keep up with everything, but this is great. Yeah, I remember thinking as a kid, oh, wow, maybe they'll have video phones someday. And Seemed like a like it would be a amazing in, in invention. <laughs> You're ahead of your time, Eric. <laughs> I also had the idea for Google Maps. I thought, wouldn't it be great if there's just something in the car that tells you the route, like without traffic? I didn't think about it as being on a phone. You know, I thought of it as like a device in a car or something. But yeah, now we have that too. I have an old old car. Mm -hmm. on wood I hope it keeps on going mm -hmm. but uh, it still has a large antenna that I can hang my my flower on so I can find it easily mm -hmm. <laughs> it's something that new new cars can't take advantage of <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello hello hi Reverend Jane hi I'm trying to gather people <laughs> So we'll see who comes, but I'm glad that you all are here. Hi, Eric. Hi. Are you gonna stick around or are you moving on to the next thing, Mr. Busy Man? I I'm gonna sign off once some people get in here. I'm just hanging out with Julia and Inga for now. Okay. I'll keep wandering around a little bit, see if I can gather people and I'll be back. Okay. 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 Eric, you don't have to stay. We can chat. Okay, I might sign off then. I'm really tired. Work has been exhausting for me these past few weeks. And okay, okay. take care. <laughs> Sounds good. Good to see you, Julianne Inga. Bye, Eric. Thank Bye. you. Yep.